Hello everyone, welcome back to A Beautiful Life. Um, today we are breaking down the third trimester. So this is the third part of the series that we've been doing about preparing for your baby. Um, we have two more, I think, two more in this series that we're going to be talking about. Um, for those of you watching on video, I promise I don't slouch like this all the time, um, but my microphone is so low that I gotta get down to it. <laughs> um, anyway, being prepared for labor and delivery helps an ease anxiety and improves the healing process during the fourth trimester. This is something that's super important. Um, and especially if you're a new mom, if this is your first pregnancy, having those anxieties eased is a really, really, really important step to having a really easy labor and delivery. So continuing being active um, is really important because what it's doing is it's actually preparing the muscles and joints for labor and delivery. So making sure that you are including pelvic work to support pelvic floor stability is very important. Um, there are specific pelvic floor programs that you can go through. I personally have not found that any particular diastasis or pelvic floor programs on their own have been useful for a large majority of women. So having a program that covers all bases as far as women's um, fitness, which by the way, I do have a program for that, um, is going to be the most successful because it's going to work with not only diastasis healing, which is going to be more important during the fourth trimester, but also pelvic floor stability, which is going to be important for all trimesters, as well as keeping your core nice and strong during pregnancy so that when you do have the baby, it kind of bounces back. Although not all the time, I'm not going to guarantee that. Um, but it also helps with any bladder leakage. It's going to help with any tearing problems. It's going to help with flexibility. So everything that you do now in your third trimester is going to help you in labor and delivery, or it's going to hinder you. So it's really important to keep that in mind. But also really, really avoid excess pressure on the joints as they, particularly the pelvis, are more flexible at this point. So as much as we want to do pelvic floor stability, you really want to be careful with the joints as the the flexibility of those joints is increased at this time. So just be careful, just be aware. Um, we talked about this, I think, in the last episode, but if you want to um, see what we talked about, I think it's elastin. We had talked about, um, oh, it's relaxin, and it is later in this episode. Never mind, we're talking about it today. I will get back to that. So anyway, um, if you are scared of tearing, this is a really, really important thing. A lot of women are afraid of tearing. Sitz baths or a perineal massage can be utilized to prepare the area. I know a lot of um, uh, midwives will do perineal massage. Now, this is kind of invasive for a midwife to do it, but you can do it on your own. You basically just massage the area to widen it so that once you get to the delivery process, you're not, your body isn't shocked and it's not going to tear. Um, but also sit spots are really important throughout the third trimester because what that, what that is going to do is it's going to soften the tissue and it'll help prepare you as well. So you can do both. You can do one or the other. You can just forego them all together. That's up to you. Um, a birthing ball, especially when you're leaning forward on it, can help with fetal positioning. So if you're having trouble with that, um, a birthing ball is really, really great for that. Also, bouncing on it is really great for getting um, labor going. And then light massage for the lower back and sore muscles helps ease aches and pains, which I know you're going to start having during this, this phase in your pregnancy, your third trimester, you're going to start having some aches and pains. Your back might feel a little bit more painful, but this is all because of the positioning of the baby. Most important during this phase um, is to just be in the moment. Um, this is a really, really special moment, enjoying the time that you have with your baby. For the last few months that you, or the last few months, I think, I don't know, the last couple of weeks, we'll just say, last few weeks that you have with your baby in your belly, because it's a very special, special time. Talk and sing to your baby, but also be kind to yourself about how things are different and how they're changing, how your body's changing. You might be moving slower but you are creating a miracle inside you. So another part of preparing, especially if you're planning on a hospital birth, is to make sure that you have everything you need in your hospital bag. This is a no-brainer. Everybody knows this. If you are having a home birth, not a lot of people kind of consider this because they're like, well, I'm having a home birth. I know where everything is. But making sure that you set aside the things that you feel like you need 
even if you don't know if you'll need it, set it aside anyway, put it in a very accessible area um, so that you don't have to go searching around when you are going through the process. You want it to be very, very smooth. Research pain relief options, birthing positions, and herbal supports if that's something you're interested in. Um, if you are having a midwife or a midwife nurse, a nurse midwife, sorry, then they will help you with this because usually they are trained in more natural pain relief and support or herbal support. So they would help you with this already. But if they're not, this is something you'll need to do your research in. And again, I share details all the time on my Instagram page, especially in my stories. So I have saved most of them in my pregnancy highlight. If they are not saved in my highlight, you are more than welcome to ask me. But um, they disappear within 24 hours. So if you're late to the game and you haven't seen them, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to help you out. So joint pain and ligament relax relaxation is due to the increased production of the hormone relaxin. So this is what I was mentioning before. There are also postural changes and increased weight on the lower extremities that can cause pain. So relaxin and progesterone soften the joints and ligaments, which is why flexibility programs should be very, very limited. In fact, I would go as far as to say avoid them altogether in your third trimester because they're really not necessary because um, they can just put way too much pressure and the last thing you need to do is to dislocate a joint or tear any kind of connective tissue. So we do not want any of that happening, and that's also why we do not recommend heavy lifting during this time either. Just the stability alone is compromised and needs to be supported through gentle strength training. Hopping, jumping, or bouncing should really be avoided. Um, it's not going to do anything good for your pelvic floor because what that's doing is it's putting so much pressure down there that it's going to weaken and destabilize those pelvic floor muscles. So... I'm not a big fan of CrossFit already, but when I see pregnant women, especially when they get into the third trimester, continuing to do CrossFit, it really bugs the crap out of me. And it makes me very upset because what they're doing is they feel fine. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm doing totally fine. I, I feel good. My muscles are fine. I'm, you know, the baby's fine. But what is really happening on the inside is something that they don't consider. And pelvic floor dysfunction is one of the most common problems that a lot of women have, even if they've never been pregnant before ever. Women are showing up with pelvic floor issues. So avoid the CrossFit if you can. I really don't recommend it at all. Walking, swimming, water aerobics, bar, Pilates, cycling... Um, gentle body weight for hips, knees, and thighs are the best exercises slash workouts that you can do in your third trimester. Um, again, I have a program specifically for this that walks you through every trimester, including your fourth trimester. So you're welcome to go check those out as well. As far as nutrition, eggs, protein, um, lean protein in particular, nuts, papaya, salmon, DHA, Anything with DHA in it, I wouldn't say supplements, but anything with it in it, anything with calcium, anything with vitamin D, particularly being outside in the sun is going to be important, and then increasing magnesium are all going to be very, very important at this stage because you are fueling a second human being, and you're going to need all of the protein that you can get as well as these minerals and um, vitamins. The vitamins and minerals that you eat in your food, as well as if you are supplementing them, they're going to help immensely for your recovery phase after labor and delivery. So you really want to keep that in mind. So I want to close by stating one last thing. It is important that you make sure that you and your doctor are on the same page about everything. Okay, this is really crucial because there will be women who will have this beautiful birth plan and no, not everything's going to go according to plan, but there will be doctors who will override everything that the mother wants because they haven't met with them ahead of time to make sure that they are on the same page. Now, this is very important. You also need to make sure your partner is in on this as well, because your partner will have to take charge of making sure that everything you've planned is put into action while you focus on having your baby. Your focus is your baby and your baby alone. Your partner needs to be there for doctor. So you need to make sure that not only are you and your doctor on the same page, but your partner and your doctor are on the same page as well. So you really need to include them in the conversation. And you need to make sure you're choosing the right doctor for you because they can be bullies if you let them. Um, and that's just not going to make your delivery process any easier. 
So make things very clear. Don't let your doctors push you around and maintain firm in your decisions because honestly, you're the one who's having the baby, not them. So just saying, unless it's an emergency situation, they shouldn't be able to push you around and tell you anything. <laughs> okay. Um, again, emergency situations, uh, hands off. I have no, no opinions because that is completely their jurisdiction. But when it comes to an easy, straightforward birth, don't let them push you around. Having someone there with you to help you in this area is also going to be an excellent idea. So if you don't have your partner there with you, but you have a mom or a sister or a best friend, whatever you have, have someone there who can support you through this because being alone is just not going to be the greatest um, option. Unless you really love your doctor. In that case, you're good to go and that's awesome. <laughs> now, midwives can do this. Um, there have been instances where midwives will just push through and just completely ignore certain things. So this is, again, why we talked about interviewing your midwives beforehand. You want to make sure that you're paired with someone really, really good who's going to take your thoughts into consideration and your needs and not bully you through things. So it doesn't matter who they are. If they're a midwife, doctor, doula, doesn't matter. Make sure that they're on the same page with you, period. So I hope that this empowers you and gets you excited for your third trimester. If you uh, ever have any questions, like I said, you are welcome to um, reach out to me. There's a lot that I haven't addressed here. There's a lot of, about the third trimester that we could talk about, but it would be a very long episode. Um, and then there are so many different contingencies. Not everybody is the same. Not every woman's going to have the same experience or have the same symptoms or whatever. Um, they also don't have the same background. So how you prepare before you get pregnant is going to, it's just going to, it's going to set up how you're going to be pregnant and how you're going to recover after. So this is why we take every woman individually. We don't take all women as being all the same all the time. So if you have any questions, please reach out. Again, everything will be on Instagram. So make sure you check that out and check out the pregnancy highlight. I've pretty much saved as much, as many things that I could, but anything that wasn't saved, um, as far as herbs and stuff that I didn't save all of the herbal things. But if you have any questions about herbal things, especially when in regards to restless leg syndrome or nausea or, um, easy labor and delivery, speeding up the process, that kind of stuff, any, anything that you can think of with herbals, you are more than welcome to contact me. Um, it is important that when you are talking about herbs or supplementations that you're going with a health professional who knows your background, because if you were to take a certain herb, but you had some sort of health condition that was unknown, it could worsen the symptoms. So it's really important before you take any herbs, I never say, okay, you're going to take this and this and this, and that's going to help you. No, please don't take that as, don't take that as gospel. Please don't take herbs without a health professional first treating you for whatever health conditions that you are currently dealing with. I feel like I have to really, really preface that because I will tell people about herbs and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I want to try this. Don't. <laughs> don't. You need to understand what you're doing first. So if you want to try herbs, I highly recommend a consultation with me. Your first consultation is always free. A health assessment, if you want to go through a complete health assessment or blood chemistry analysis, um, you're welcome to do that as well. And then that will give me a good background and, and then I can recommend herbals for you. But anyway, just wanted to put that out there because I don't want people thinking that I'm saying, take these herbs and you'll be better. <laughs> that's not always the case. So on that note, thank you all for listening. I will be back here next week talking about the fourth trimester. And then we have one more episode after this that's going to close out our series. So again, thank you for listening. Have a beautiful day, everyone.